I'm calling this meeting to order. Good evening. On behalf of the council, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the Princeton Council Reorganization Meeting of January 5th, 2015. Um, and please join me for the salute to the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, can you please read the notice for the meeting? All the requirements have been met, Mayor. Okay, terrific. And um, now can you please report to this President that at the, for the election? Or I, I can report that at the um, election in November that uh, Joe Butler was elected to a three-year term uh, beginning uh, today, and uh, Walter Bliss couldn't come forward to administer the oath of office to Joe Butler. Can I is this on? Can I introduce um, my daughter, Annie Duncan, my brother, Tom Summers, and my husband, Jim Butler? Kind of my team. They're going to hold the Bible. And um, now I'd like to uh, call up Mr. Miller and have the oath of office administered to him by his uh, by Simon Miller, Esquire. And, and yeah, do we need to have the official report from the clerk as well? I can report to those present that you know, this past November at the general election that uh, Bernard P. Miller uh, was elected to serve the three-year uh, three-year term on Princeton Council beginning today. Please repeat after me. I, Bernard P. Miller. I, Bernard P. Miller. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance. At, to the same. To the same. And to the governments established in the United States. 
and to the governments established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. I do further solemnly swear. I do further solemnly swear. That I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. Impartially. Impartially. And justly. And justly. Perform all the duties of Princeton Council Member. Perform all the duties of Princeton Council Member. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Now that the gang's all here, Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Ms. Howard? Here. Ms. Crum Miller? Here. Mr. Miller? Here. Mr. Liverman? Here. Ms. Butler? Here. Mr. Simon? Here. And Mayor Lemper? Here. And I think we just, um, somebody just got a note from somebody at home that the, we're not being broadcast right now. I don't know if there's a, some sort of signal we can give to the back that they should double check. It's going now. Perfect. Welcome to everybody who's now joining us on television. Um, all right, I will um, now accept nominations for the office of council president. I would like, nom I would like to nominate um, Councilman uh, Bernie Miller. I'll second that. Um, and I'd just like to say uh, it's an honor and a, and a pleasure. Um, this council is coming off of a very successful year, uh, having been led by a dynamic leadership team of Mayor Lampert and Council President Bernie Miller. Uh, Council President Miller's stamina continues to amaze me. Council President Miller, while serving on the Animal Control Advisory Committee, Cable Television Committee, Finance Committee, Local Emergency Planning Committee, Ordinance Review Committee, and five other committees or task forces, has always served with excellent leadership skills. Through his wisdom and even-handed logic, this council has improved. So that's why I'm, I'm nominating um, Councilman Bernie Miller, who's a, a dear friend and a, a great leader for this council. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? I'm seeing none. Um, is there a motion to close the nominations? So moved. Second. Um, all in favor of closing the nominations? Aye. 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 Any opposed? OK. Um, and um, all in favor of electing Bernie Miller? Council President? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, congratulations, Council President Miller. Um, and next we come to the oath of office um, to be administered to the tax collector, um, Tammy Tisdale. And I'd like to invite up um, Trish Chris Cecil to um, perform the oath. your uh, left hand on the Bible and if you could raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Tammy Tisdale, I, Tammy Tisdale do, solemnly swear do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and to the governments Established in, the United States, established in the United States and in this state, in this state under, the under the authority of the people. I do further solemnly swear that I will faithfully, impartially, impartially and, justly and justly perform all the duties of tax collector, all the duties of tax collector 
according to the best of my ability. So help me God. Congratulations. That's not the easiest of jobs, so thank you. <laughs> um, and I skipped over and another important swearing in, which is the swearing in of Mr. Miller as council president. So we're just going to back up and do um, that swearing in as well. And I'd like to invite up Simon Miller again to administer the oath. Is it different? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Please repeat after me. I, Bernard P. Miller. I, Bernard P. Miller. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And to the governments established in the United States. And to the governments established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. I do further solemnly swear. I do further solemnly swear. That I will faithfully that I will faithfully, impartially, impartially, and justly, and justly, perform all the duties of Princeton Council President, that I will perform all the duties of Princeton Council President, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Before we move on to the rest of our agenda, I just wanted to recognize some of our special guests that we have here tonight with us. Um, we have Senator, Senator Kip Bateman. <laughs> Assemblywoman Donna Simon. <laughs> Assemblyman Jack Chattarelli. <laughs> and Freeholder Andrew Kuntz. So I want to thank you all for coming out tonight. And, and I want to thank everybody. Um, everybody is, should be recognized. We don't have time to um, cheer for everybody. But I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Um, and now we move on to our consent agenda. And I'd just like to ask uh, members of council if there's anything. We do have a fairly long um, consent agenda. There were a couple minor changes that got made um, that have been updated on um, the website now. Um, uh, and we're pulling, um, there was originally a professional services agreement for the lawyers for the planning board that are getting pulled for the planning board to review. Um, and there are a couple minor changes with some of the terms on the uh, boards and, and commissions list. Um, but otherwise, um, and we're also adding um, Kathy Brzezinski, deputy clerk, who had accidentally been, been left off the staff appointments. Um, and are there any items on the consent agenda that members of council would like to remove? Not to remove it, but I think we also made a um, correction to the Shirley Bishop. I think, d did we make a correction into the way that was listed here? The not to exceed 165 is really... It, the, the not to exceed is wrong. phrase got pulled. So it's yes, okay. it's not... You look puzzled, Heather. It, yeah. it, it, it's not to exceed... That 165 is incorrect. That is her hourly rate, but the not to exceed amount is 13000 on the regular and twenty five on the... Grand on the um, yeah special yeah. projects or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, is, are there any items anybody would like to move from the consent agenda? And if not, is there a motion to approve? So, second. second. 
Moved by Mr. Miller and seconded by Ms. Butler. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the consent agenda passes unanimously. Um, and I know there's, there was a lot of material on that um, consent agenda that um, I want to thank Council for, for, um, for reading through it and analyzing it. And I know there have been some corrections al along um, the last few days for those. So thank you. Um, and so now we come to um, our remarks. I just have to get organized here. Yes, thank you. Um, I also, before I start tonight um, with my remarks, I wanted to uh, thank two past mayors who are here with us tonight. Um, former Mayor Marvin Reed. <laughs> and former Mayor Phyllis Marchand. Oh. And former Mayor Chad Gurner. <laughs> Uh, last year at this time, if, uh, we marked the one-year anniversary of consolidation. And if you'll remember, snow was falling, and we were headed into one of the worst winters in memory, the polar vortex. We had more than 40 inches of snow, mass power outages, school cancellations, and road salt shortages up and down the East Coast. The relentlessness of the storms tested our collective metal and the endurance of our staff police, public works, fire and EMS, engineering, recreation, and administration worked around the clock to clear streets, reopen roads, and keep everyone safe. We made good use of our emergency notification system to keep residents informed. And as with Superstorm Sandy, we partnered with the library, clergy association, schools and university to ensure everyone had a place to recharge and get warm. Together, we weathered the storm. In the fall, our emergency management director, Bob Gregory, hosted officials from FEMA who led staff and elected officials through a series of training exercises. Today, we stand even more resilient and prepared than before. And we are unquestionably better prepared and positioned to deal with severe snowstorms as a consolidated community working as one. The bringing together of the former borough and township has helped put Princeton on the map as a model municipality. In November, the New Jersey League of Municipalities awarded Princeton with the prestigious Innovation and in Governance Award for our successful implementation of consolidation. Our reconstitution as a single government continues to pay dividends and has helped us to reshape ourselves as a more affordable, diverse, and sustainable community. Our boldness in breaking new ground goes beyond consolidation, and Princeton has received statewide, national, and even international recognition in 2014 for many of our innovative initiatives. Sustainable Jersey presented Princeton with the 2014 Leadership Award for our strong commitment and dedication to community educa education and outreach initiatives, including Sustainable Princeton's Great Ideas Breakfasts and the Sustainable Leadership Awards. Sustainable Jersey also elevated Princeton to silver status, and we now join the top tier of sustainable communities in the state. We won the 2014 Outstanding Municipal Partner Award in conjunction with Princeton Community Housing for our leadership and commitment to building affordable housing, presented by the Housing and Community Development Network of New Jersey. We won a New Jersey Smart Workplaces Gold Award for our Summer Flex Time Program, awarded by the Greater Mercer TMA. And our fabulous municipal engineer, Bob Kaiser, was named Government Engineer of the Year by the Central Jersey Branch of the American Society of Civil Engineers. <laughs> Princeton was even recognized as a leader in the international arena as we were the first municipality in the state to be designated by the World Health Organization as an age-friendly community by the, um, for our walkability, available transportation options, variety of housing choices, and access to social interactions. We emerged as a leading community on other fronts as well. The health and human services departments teamed up with the public library to put together workshops to educate residents about their options under the Affordable Care Act and facilitate health insurance, insurance signups in the newly created marketplace. These efforts were held up as a model at a national health, conf health care conference in Washington, D.C. 
In 2014, we officially ushered in a new era for our police department with the promotion of Nick Sutter to chief. Under his leadership, our police department has been recognized several times over this year for their professionalism and exemplary community outreach efforts. The department earned its accreditation in March. Not an easy feat under normal circumstances and all the more remarkable given the dramatic changes brought on by consolidation. The combined police department has truly become better than the sum of its parts. We saw during the recent protests over the deaths of Michael Brown and Eric Gardner a profound and earned respect between our officers and the community they serve. And I have received many unsolicited emails and calls praising the work of our officers and communicating to me a collective pride that they serve as the face of our town. The police department has made tremendous strides. Back in 2013, as one of their first initiatives, the newly formed Safe Neighborhoods Unit conducted a survey on the community's expectations of the department. 500 residents responded, but despite significant outreach, including going door to door and translating the survey into Spanish, we, the police received no responses at all from our Latino community. The department took that as a wake-up call and redoubled their efforts at outreach, hosting a series of community meetings led by Spanish-speaking officers. Chief Sutter issued a directive clarifying that our local police do not enforce federal immigration laws and can assist immigrant members of the community without being concerned about their documentation. The police, in conjunction with the Human Services Department, also stepped up their enforcement of wage theft, a crime that surfaced as a major problem during the community meetings as immigrants are often targeted. This summer, thanks to the efforts of Councilwoman Howard, Human Services, and the Public Works Department, the Princeton Council strengthened our, our stance against wage theft by passing an ordinance regulating landscaper registration. Twenty Latino residents came to the public hearing and testified about their experiences. It was a powerful moment. Members of our community who had previously felt afraid to speak now felt empowered to participate in the democratic process and make their voices heard. Our police department's out efforts at outreach were featured by the New Jersey League of Municipalities at its annual conference and praised by members of the Obama administration. We wouldn't be receiving any of these accolades or be able to function at a high level day to day without the hard work of our exceptional staff. I wanted to take a moment to recognize some of the changing faces this past year. In 2014, we said goodbye to several longtime employees. Bill Urian, who worked in the Public Works Department for Princeton Borough and then the Consolidated Municipality for a total of 30 years. Director of Public Works, Wayne Carr, who retired after 25 years. Greg O'Neill, our town arborist. Christine Lewandowski, Historic Preservation Director, who retired after 25 years. Sergeant Mike Bender, Sergeant Joanne Malta, and Sergeant Mike Cefeli. And of course, Bob Brushai, who served as administrator of the former borough and saw us through the critical transition year and the first two years of consolidation. We owe a huge debt of gratitude to each one of them for their dedication to our community. We are thrilled to welcome several new faces. Mark DeShield, our new administrator, came to us from Montclair at the end of October and has hit the ground running. Jeff Grosser, our new health officer, had barely set up his office when he was faced with handling New Jersey's first Ebola quarantine. With the size of the active police force dipping below 50, we hired the first new police officers of the Consolidated Department, Deshaun Cribb and Donald Matthews. We also welcomed another new officer, who has in a short time already become one of the most beloved and definitely the furriest member of the force, K-9 Officer Harris. Now that it's been two years since we consolidated, it seems an appropriate time to ask, are we realizing cost savings? Have we improved services? Do we have a more responsive government? In short, is consolidation working? You might guess what my answers are, but I will go through the questions one by one. Have we recognized cost savings? Yes. We've shrunk the size of our staff from 235 employees in 2011 down to 208. If you look around, nearly every other Mercer County municipality has raised its tax rate and most have imposed double digit increases since 2010. In contrast, Princeton actually has a lower municipal tax rate than we did five years ago. 
and collectively, Princeton residents paid over $500,000 less in municipal taxes in 2014 than we did in 2008. This past year, with the help of the Citizens Finance Advisory Committee, the Princeton Council adopted policies on debt service and fund bounce levels, developed a long-term capital plan, and maintained our AAA bond rating. Council President Bernie Miller, working with Councilman Patrick Simon, led successful negotiations with Princeton University for a seven-year agreement totaling over $21 million. All of these efforts work to stabilize our finances and cushion the current and future tax burden on our residents. Have we improved services under consolidation? Yes. Even with lower municipal taxes, we've extended residential trash pickup across the entire town. We've increased police services, including community policing and traffic enforcement, despite having a smaller force. As a single municipality, we have been better able to harness technology to enhance the services we provide to residents, improve communication, and be more transparent. We now use the phone notification system for leaf and brush pickup. Um, announcements. Municipal job openings are now, well, yeah, that would be quite the feat to, uh, <laughs> maybe for next year. Uh, municipal job openings are now posted on the website for all to see. And we've created a public dashboard to provide information and data to the public in an easy to read format. In September, we launched Access Princeton, a one-stop call center for all municipal inquiries. It's a transformative technology that assists the town in providing superior service to residents by making it easy to connect to government, whether it's to report a pothole or to ask how to get a copy of your marriage license or anything in between. Residents can report issues directly to the call center by phone, by email, or mobile app. In November and December alone, 739 complaints were logged, and 732 of them have been resolved. It's a service that neither the former township nor borough would have had the available resources to provide. But with consolidation, we are easily able to convert the vacant police dispatch space into the new Access Princeton call center. Special thanks goes to Deputy Administrator Kathy Monzo for conceiving of and spearheading this great new service, to Christine Eiliff and Deb Rogers for continuing to find ways to improve upon it, and to all of the residents who have discovered and are using the service to help make our community cleaner, safer, and better. Do we have a more responsive government? Yes. We are more responsive and better positioned to partner with other community institutions to find efficiencies and improve service. The school district, library, and municipality hired a joint networking specialist at a savings to all three institutions. The school's library in town also formed an energy working group in 2014 to jointly explore energy savings and renewables. In 2015, we expect to issue a request for proposals to install a solar array farm on the old River Road landfill site, make, making productive use of an otherwise unusable land. And just last month, Sustainable Jersey awarded Sustainable Princeton a $35,000 grant to help our business community save money by saving on energy costs. As another sign of strength in community relationships, the municipality signed a memorandum of understanding with the per Princeton First Aid and Rescue Squad. The squad will build its much-needed new headquarters at the site of the former township public works facilities, which had been sitting dormant. In exchange, the town will acquire the squad's existing buildings and property near the Princeton Shopping Center for possible use for affordable housing. There was a fear that with consolidation, we'd lose our identity, compromise our values, and fail to support the downtown. If anything, as one community, we are a stronger voice for our values and have been able to deploy extra resources for center of town improvements. We've worked with Sustainable Princeton to bring long, long overdue recycling containers to Nassau Street. We will continue to add capacity in 2015 and at the same time work together with Mercer County, local businesses and landlords to facilitate recycling by shops and downtown apartment dwellers. And while I'm on, um, while I'm mentioning the county, I did notice Sam Frisbee, freeholder Sam Frisbee snuck in. So I just wanted to say thank you for joining us. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, Public Works has stepped up its efforts to beautify the Central Business District and now sweeps up dirt and debris twice a week. Moore Street, Van Devender, Park Place, and Branch 
alley underwent major reconstruction work with new sewers, water lines, sidewalks, and roads. The engineering department also oversaw the delicate reconstruction of historic Edge Hill Road. In 2012, the former borough and township both adopted complete streets policies with commitments to make our streets safe for all users, pedestrians and bicyclists included, not just cars and trucks. And in 2014, we started to implement complete streets through proposals for the first ever bike lanes close to the center of town. Proposals that demonstrate a real commitment to creating a more bikeable, walkable community. We have taken a strong stand in support of fundamental issues like affordable housing. Princeton has had a long, proud history of building affordable housing, dating back to the 1930s with the development of Franklin and Maple Terrace and the creation of the Borough Housing Authority. However, in 2014, New Jersey's Council on Affordable Housing told Princeton we would have zero obligation to build more affordable housing, despite the needs of hundreds of our residents whose names fill the current waiting lists. Council rightly objected. We still await updated numbers and rules from the state, but in the meantime, we continue our commitment. In 2015, Council President Miller and Council Members Liverman and Crum Miller, along with the rest of the Affordable Housing Task Force, will identify opportunities for converting underused, publicly owned properties into sites for possible sites for affordable housing. Staying true to our values by investing in affordable housing is essential to maintaining and enhancing Princeton's ethnic and economic diversity and underscores our efforts to be a welcoming community for all. In addition, Council took action to prioritize quality of life for our residents by preserving the character of our neighborhoods. Last month, Council passed an hours of operation ordinance, limiting middle of the night operating hours for stores located right next to homes in residential zones. Is consolidation working? Yes, but we still have work to do. Tomorrow night at 6 p.m. right here, I uh, welcome you back. Um, we're gonna be back gathering here again to sort through our goals and priorities for the coming year. This is an extremely energetic council and we'll likely have another full plate in 2015. In addition to some of the ongoing projects I've mentioned, um, in the next year we will be continuing our discussion of the Weatherspoon Street Corridor and our desire to retain its character, assessing the facility needs of our fire department, working with the police department on a strategic plan, continuing with the ordinance harmonization process, and I wanted to thank Council President Miller and Councilwomen Joe Butler and Jenny Crummiller for um, all the work they've done in the past year and the work that they'll be continuing to do on, on the ordinances. Uh, we'll be working with Princeton University as they develop their new campus plan. And we'll be continuing to look for ways to innovate and use technology to help, our, to help us do our jobs better. This April, we'll be teaming up with the library and Tiger Labs for Princeton's first ever municipal hackathon. So this is a call to all techies of all ages to come out for an all-nighter um, to work on harnessing technology to address municipal challenges. In looking ahead to 2015, I'd be remiss not to look back at some of the notable, notable people Princeton lost in 2014, men and women who helped to shape our community and touched many of our lives. I want to acknowledge a few of them this evening. Paul Sigmund, beloved professor and husband of former mayor Barbara Box Sigmund, women and children's advocate and exceptional friend Liz Erickson, Len Newton, who was instrumental in the fight for interracial housing, Ted Vile, who helped create Princeton Community Housing, social justice advocate Ann Yashahara, community volunteer Penny Baskerville, and Princeton's extraordinary philanthropist, Bill Scheide. Princeton is a wonderful community because of the truly remarkable people who call this town home and are willing to devote their time, their money, and their talents to making our community even better and stronger. I'll conclude my remarks tonight with the story of another person who is dedicating herself to our community and the special store she opened this year. I had the honor of cutting the ribbon for a new business, a beauty salon on Lee Avenue with a unique bit of history. Doris Burrell, a name familiar to many Princeton old timers, ran a hair salon out of the exact same spot uh, for four decades. Now the building is back in the family and again open as a hair and beauty salon. 
Doris's granddaughter, Najwa Kamo, is the co-owner, and it's called Makeover Studio Salon. And she's carrying on the legacy of her grandmother, but with her own particular spin. We can all take inspiration from this story as we take stock of where we are um, as a community, where we've come from, the dramatic changes to our government brought on by consolidation, and where we're heading now. Like Najwa Kamo reclaiming her grandmother's shop, we should aim to honor Princeton's history and maintain our unique and wonderful identity while making over our community into a better version of itself, more affordable, sustainable, and innovative. Of course, we may face discord. 2014 certainly had its share. We have weathered those storms, and we have moved on. I'm ready and eager to embrace all the challenges and opportunities of the coming year, and I look forward to working with my colleagues on council, the staff, our volunteers, and the broader community to make Princeton a shining example of good government serving an exceptional community. Thank you. Um, I'd like to turn it over to Council uh, President Miller. Do you have any comments? Just very briefly, I'd like to thank my colleagues for their support and vote of confidence in me to continue to perform as Council President for 2015. I've had the pleasure of working with all of them and with our staff over the past two years, and with their help, we've moved forward to help bring home the promise of consolidation, and we will continue that work. We'll roll up our sleeves and continue that work through 2015 and move even further in that direction. Thank you all. Ms. Hart? I have formal remarks that I'll put in the record. Linda, I'll get into you, but really I just want to congratulate uh, Joe and Bernie for their re-election, and, and I look forward to working with all of my colleagues. Um, the mayor spoke really eloquently about our accomplishments and, the, and challenges that we face, and so, um, but really I just look forward to working with all of my colleagues in the coming year. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Carhill? Um, I want to thank, I mean, I want to congratulate Bernie and Joe on their re-elections. Bernie, I look forward to working you, with you for another three years. I appreciate your measured demeanor in meetings and your diligent approach to council work. Joe, you faced a difficult situation this past year, but you handled, handled yourself with grace and aplomb. I'm so glad we have you with us, always challenging the status quo and thinking outside the box. To the rest of my colleagues, we had a productive year last year, and I'm happy to be part of this team, especially with our new administrator, Mark DeShield, starting a new year. Mark, so far, so good. <laughs> to the public, I really would love to hear from you. Please use the website to email me. We don't hear enough of your opinions. An email can make a big difference in our thinking, and I just want to implore you to, you know, really feel free to email us. It'll help. Thank you. I have two pages, but I, I don't know. If, um, there are a few more remarks, and I guess I can submit them to, to Linda. But I just want to start off. I think it's important to start the year off. I guess I would say in a cohesive way here. So. I want to say that this year has been a lot like the advertisement. I loved as a kid, and I'm sure many of you probably remember. It goes like, sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. I'm in joy has nuts, mouths don't. And this is, this is how the running and the attending of all the meetings during 2014 kind of probably made all of us feel over, over a certain time period. But I must say now that 2014 is over, I feel like the older lady in the Wendy's commercial who said, where is the beef? Yes, where is the beef? Or I, may, or I may change that wording a little and say, where are the challenges? I know from working with my committee appointments, there are many challenges this year. 
But I just want to briefly thank um, Mayor, our Mayor Lambert, for having the fortitude and desire to serve this great town of Princeton. As someone born in Princeton, I could never have been so proud to have a progressive and fair-minded mayor at this time. I want to thank Council President Bernie Miller for having the leadership skills to guide this council to consensus on issues where I, for one, has simply, was, has simply given up. But when Council President Miller would ask, let's just give this another shot. And we'll get together and the council seems to come together and, and get something done. Let me say that Princeton's lucky to have Councilwoman uh, Jenny Crumbler, and we're glad that she had decided to run for office last year and to serve. Jenny brings a unique and different opinion that lets all of us think outside the box. I've said this before, and I'll say this again about Jenny. Jenny has one of the giant, the, a gigantic heart, and really does care about everyone. On every council, there's a council person, which is a, which is a good thing, that understands and keeps the process on course. Our process professional, as I call her, is Councilwoman Jo Butler. Councilwoman Butler, because of her keen eye and her finance background, has proved to be an asset on this council this year. Sometimes municipal councils need moral direction, and what I call a sounding board. Councilwoman Howard has been such a person. Our Latinos, brothers and sisters, and so many other groups that were taken advantage of soon learned that there is a new caring and persuasive moral sheriff in town. Last but not least, this council, because of the large amount of information that we receive on a daily basis that, that is so detailed, and, and I tell you, we have a detailed and thoughtful councilman named Patrick Simon that dissects the information and may fix or recommend substantive changes that have over the year 2014 tightened the ordinances or complaints that we, we've received. And with that, let me thank our senior management, from Mark DeShield to Bob Rushai to Kathy Monzo to Linda McDermott, to everyone. Uh, Princeton is a great town. I love serving. Um, I've been here for years, but I still don't mind. And I just want to say thank you and uh, Happy New Year. And I'll submit my other uh, remarks to Linda that probably can be read online. Thank you. Now? <laughs> Thank you. I'd again like to offer my public congratulations to Councilman Bernie Miller on his re-election. And I would like to also offer my heartfelt thanks to the voters of Princeton. Cliché as it may be, I sit here as living proof that every vote counts, a fact that is not lost on me. I value and respect each and every person who supported me, and I pledge to continue to work as hard as I possibly can to make our consolidation successful, to deliver excellent services at a reduced cost, to make our government more efficient and responsive to residents, and to make our work transparent and honest. And to those six voters who put me over the top, let me say that your new sidewalks will be installed shortly. That, of course, is a joke because everyone in Princeton knows there's no such thing as a free sidewalk. <laughs> On a serious note, we, made some, we had some significant achievements in 2014, most of, most of which have been covered by Mayor Lumpert. In particular, though, I would like to highlight the significant improvements on the legal front with a new attorney and reduced um, expenses for our municipality. We establish a process for regular review, and as members of the legal committee, um, and at Ms. Howard's suggestion, we have taken steps to become more proactive with regard to potential litigation by reviewing possible areas of friction and addressing them before they get to a crisis stage. I'd like to add my welcome to Mark DeShield as we begin our new year in earnest, and I look forward to our goal-setting session tomorrow evening. We made significant progress on consolidating our ordinances, but much work remains, and I look forward to continuing that <laughs> work with Ms. Crum Miller and uh, Councilman Miller. It's a lot of work. Uh, in November, the county freeholders approved our request to use our Mercer at Play grant money to refurbish Mary Moss Park, a project that is of particular interest to me, and I am delighted that with a new three-year term, I should see this project through to completion. The Parks and Recreation Department is in the initial stages of planning, and I look forward to a time when we can meet with neighbors and concerned residents to gather input. I'm pleased with the formation of a new 
Council Finance Committee. Under Scott Siller's leadership, CFAC has done an exemplary job of recommending fiscal policies and communicating important information to the public, and I'm eager to continue that work with them. Their analysis has been vital to our decision making, and I hope that the new Finance Committee will allow Council to do even more work um, in analyzing our capital spending priorities. Finally, I would like to close by recalling our message to voters two years ago when we sought their support. We acknowledged our different viewpoints, but also our shared values and commitment to teamwork to make Princeton the best it can be. I'd like to renew my commitment to celebrating our different viewpoints, but also our shared values, and hope that we can recommit to teamwork on behalf of our community. Thank you. And now poor Councilman Simon has nothing left to say. <laughs> uh, no, actually, this year I'm prepared. I learned my lesson last year. <laughs> uh, Happy New Year, everyone. Um, you can't say thank you enough. So I would actually like to take the opportunity to say thank you to many of the people who have worked with this year on municipal and community issues, large and small, uh, mostly with little fanfare. And um, I, I'm hoping you'll bear with me on this. And there's a lot of people, so you have a choice after this. You can take a quiz on the, uh, the accomplishments of the council and uh, Mayor, that, uh, uh, Mayor Lempert gave, or on the people that I'm about to list out. And there's actually another option. If you hear somebody's name that you recognize, take a moment in the spirit of the season, in the spirit of starting the year outright, to say thank you for the work they're doing on behalf of our community. I would like to start by thanking the members of CFAP, the Citizens Finance Advisory Committee, who helped make this uh, the all too often uh, murky world of municipal budgets and finance more clear, both for the public and for this governing body. I especially want to thank Scott Sillers, who as chairman puts in a great deal of time on CFAC and ably represents the committee in public meetings. I also want to thank the citizen volunteers, Brian McDonald, Will Dove and Adrian Krepke, all of whom are continuing this year, and also Gary Pattison, who served on CFAC for the past two years, and Maureen Kearney, who joins the committee this year. I would also like to thank my colleagues, Mayor Liz Lampert and Councilwoman Joe Butler, who serve as liaisons from the governing body, and from the professional municipal staff, our Director of Finance, Kathy Monzo, and CFO, Sandy Webb. From the Alexander Street University Place Traffic and, uh, and Transit Task Force, which works on long-term traffic and transit issues focused along Alexander Street and University Place, I would like to thank Chairman Kevin Wilkes, Citizen Volunteer in Transit Development and Planning Expert Nat Bottingheimer, and Kristen Applegate and Kim Jackson of Princeton University. I also wish to thank my colleague, Councilman Lance Liverman, who serves with me uh, on that task force, and from the professional municipal staff, Planning Director Lee Solo, as well as municipal engineer Bob Kaiser, municipal land use engineer Jack West, and Carrie Phillip. I would also uh, like to acknowledge um, that the many citizens who have contributed to the discussions of this task force, though they, they hold no formal position, including Ralph Widener, Anton Lonston, Sheldon Sturgis, Rodney Fisk, Chip Kreider, Heather Kisilowitz, Kip Cherry, and former Borough Mayor Marvin Reed. From the Transit Trust Fund, I would like to thank citizen volunteers Scott Sillers, Anton Lonston, Princeton University representatives Kristen Applegate, Kim Jackson, and Karen Giserni, and municipal engineer Jack West, along with my colleagues Mayor Liz Lampert and Council President Bernie Miller. From the LEPC, the Local Emergency Planning Committee, I would like to thank all the volunteers, partners, staff, and colleagues who helped plan for disasters of all, all kinds that could conceivably hit our community, including Director of Emergency Management Bob Gregory, Council President Bernie Miller, Councilwoman Heather Howard, Administrator Mark DeShield, Chief of Police Nick Sutter, Director of Finance Kathy Monzo, Director of Infrastructure and Operations Bob Huff, Municipal Engineer Bob Kaiser, our very able citizen volunteers Mark Scheibner and Grace Sinden, and Dan Dingle from Princeton University, Gary Weissman from the Princeton Public Schools, and Paul Minsky, Princeton University's Director of Public Safety. From the Advisory Planning District's Task Force, who are working on improving the neighborhood planning and zoning process, basically making the, the planning process more accessible to us, to all of us in the community. I would like to thank citizen volunteers Wanda Gunning, Valerie Haynes, Bill Harlett, and Ryan Lilienthal, our Municipal Director of Planning, Lee Solo, 
and Task Force Chair and colleague, Councilwoman Jenny Crumler. You've done an outstanding job with that committee, and we're about to wrap up. Thank you. From the Public Works Committee, which is an internal council and staff committee, I would like to thank the professional municipal staff, led by Director of Infrastructure and Operations Bob Huff and Municipal Engineer Bob Kaiser, Assistant Engineer Deanna Stockton, Dan Van Metter, Janet Pellicero, and Janice Most. I would also like to thank my colleagues, Mayor Liz Lempert, who has served on the committee for the past two years, Jenny Crummer, who will continue to serve on the Public Works Committee, and welcome Council President Bernie Miller, who joins the committee effective today. And before I forget, to Matt Wasserman and the members of the Environmental Commission, Donna Liu and the members of the Cable TV Committee, and Diane Chacon and the members of the Princeton Community TV Board, I want to say thank you for all of your service to Princeton. I look forward to working with you in 2015 in my new committee assignments. I, I, I also want to say a special thank you to a man who's only recently begun working for the municipality and yet who seems to be everywhere he needs to be and then some, frankly. Administrator Mark DeShield, welcome one more time to Princeton, and thank you for putting in such, a, such an uh, enormous effort to make a fast start. Turning to my colleagues, I would like to start by congratulating, congratulating Councilwoman Butler and Council President Miller on their re-elections this year, and Council President Miller on his election to president of this body for a third year. I would like to thank all of my colleagues on this governing body. At this juncture, I have served with all of you for two years. And I know that each of you invest so much of your time and effort on behalf of our community. Take pride in your individual contributions, please, and in what we have accomplished and will accomplish together. I have and will do the same, and I consider it an honor to serve beside each of you in this government. I wish to uh, especially acknowledge two of my colleagues with whom I've had the opportunity to work closely this past year, Councilwoman Jimmy, Jenny Crummler, on some of those challenging issues we face. I know I can turn to you for insights and perspective. You bring an uncompromising commitment to fairness and a deep sense of empathy and concern for individuals to everything you do, to everything we do as a council. And Councilwoman Joe Butler, this council does not give an award for hardest working member, but if we did, you would be the finalist each and every year. Since long before I took office, you have been simply put indefatigable, working tirelessly on behalf of, Princeton, of the Princeton community, resolute, whatever the challenges and whatever the obstacles. Thank you. On a more personal note, I want to say thank you to my spouse, Mark Wiener, for the sacrifices you make so I can do this work. And I'd, I would also like to shout out happy birthday to my mother, Margaret Simon, who this year is warm at home in West Bloomfield, Michigan. I would like to close my remarks by expressing my appreciation, appreciation to all of you here today and to the people who may view these proceedings in the future and to all the people of Princeton. A little over two years ago, and again last year, you gave me the title councilman and put the word honorable in front of my name. From the ver first day I took office, and still very much so today, I am deeply humbled by the faith and trust you have placed in me. I thank you for the privilege and opportunity to serve as your representative on this council. Thank you, everyone. Happy New Year and good night. Thank you. Um, and it is a real pleasure to serve with each and every one of you up here. Um, I wanted to open it up for public comments. If there's anybody who would like to um, make a comment before we close tonight. If you'd like, please come up to the mic. If you could state your name, please. Good evening. My name is Saul Mazariegos. I'm the owner of A Amigo Princeton Taxi, Taxi Cab Service in Princeton. Um, I'm concerned about the situation with uh, the uh, vehicles that are working in the area uh, without a license. Uh, I think I spoke with you uh, this past week, uh, and I wonder if there is anything can be done, if the council can do Yes, so we're going to order to the police department. Yes, so this is an issue with um, the Uber cars coming into Princeton, and uh, it's on the agenda for our next uh, uh, public safety committee to see what can be done. But okay. thank you for bringing this issue to our attention. Thank Mayor. You. We also are working on the taxi ordinance even as we speak and um, so we part of our work on that taxi ordinance is we plan to have a meeting with the owners of the uh, you know the registered taxi cab operators in town and with the police. So we're moving forward on a couple of fronts. Do you have a time frame for that meeting? 
Um, we, well, we want to take another stab at the work on the ordinance. So I, I'm thinking at the two or three weeks. Two or three weeks, yeah, early February maybe. But, but so that is, is, we're aware of the issues. We've met with some of the owners of the cabs already and had a conversation with them. And they've, we've had a conversation. We're working on it. Okay, how, how should I get another part well, so of we'll be, I have your contact informa information, and I know that you're registered with the town, so if the, that group right. will be reaching out to you. So you should hear something, it sounds like, within the next month or so. Thank you all. Okay, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much, and a happy new year. Thank you. Happy new year. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? Um, seeing none, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. And um, we're having a party across the street in the firehouse, and everybody's invited. So um, hope to see you there, and Happy New Year.